So I've already actually included uh, to communicate between the game and the uh, the game engine and the shader. You use uniforms. So you set a uniform, and that's kind of like a parameter to the shader. And this uniform is called U time, uniform time. And it's a float, and it's going to show us uh, the time in seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that as a component to our sine wave, we also want to add the time in seconds to move the wave along in time. Now, let's go to let's let's firstly test that this works by setting the. Uh, so. Actually, first I'll just show show you if we go frame buffer shaders. This shows us that uh, that what's currently set to our frame buffer shader. So it's a list, just one item in the list. We have the begin and end of the order as we expect, uh, and then we have the shader info is what we passed in. But this shader value contains the actual game engine object which represents the shader. So what we want to do is we want to set that. Uh, Th that has a collection of uniforms, which will include all the uniforms specified up here. So we're going to set the, uh, so we know that it's the first element of the list, and it's its shader object, and uniforms, and we called it uTime. So uTime, the game automatically reads this uTime and makes it available uh, here to be set. So let's set it to say 0.5. And when we do that, we can see the wave moved along a little bit. Let's try setting it to 1.5. We can see the wave moved along more. So what we would actually like to do is go into Fregato and edit Fregato's code. And in his on process, we can set that value. So we set uh, we set So we set that to the time in seconds. So I've done that and it immediately works. Uh, we see that the wave is actually moving along automatically now uh, because it's communicating with the shader every frame. Now let's take this a step further and uh, and let's talk about how we could use this if we wanted to implement a water controller so that in the rectangles in which there's water there's a distortion applied. Uh, what we might want to do is we might want to be able to set a rectangle on the screen in which the shader effect applies and elsewhere there's no shader effect. So what we can do is we can set a uniform and we'll call it the area. So this is going to be the area that the shader is actually applied and elsewhere the shader will, will not appear. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, V is if this uh, if the position is inside the area So only apply this transformation if it's actually inside the area. And it looks like I made some kind of a mistake here. Uh, Go back a minute. Works. 
Okay. So, and V, uh, oops, okay, here we go, and so we're saying that only if, uh, if the coordinates are inside the, the U area that's passed in will we apply the effect, and because we've typed that, this has stopped because U area has not been set at all, so let's go over here and actually just here set the u area so let's go uh so let's set it to be sort of the central area of the screen so 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.7 0 0.7 so when we do this we expect only the middle area of the screen to show the distortion and we do that and that's what we're seeing it's only showing in a let's let's make this a slightly larger rectangle if you get that and now we can see the there's a rectangle uh let's clear this out so we can see we can see this rectangle in the middle of the screen shows a distortion and the rest of the screen does not because it's only in the area that was passed from the game engine. Now, you could of course have a water controller for instance that continually updates and calculates the rectangles to pass in to the shader and then the shader could only show distortions within those specific rectangles. And then just as, just as a little bit of extra fun I'm going to show how we could also do some kind of uh, distortion where we say take the red channel and we can uh, we can dampen it by dividing it by two so that dampens it but then we can also add uh, the sign of uh, of the x value so and then we can take say the and see how I'm doing this outside of the rectangle so it takes place on the entire screen and we can then add a different wavelength let's do the yellow uh, sorry the uh, green and then add yet another wavelength let's do the blue and then we have this kind of crazy rainbow effect on the screen so hopefully this has given a, a good overview of how the the frame buffer shaders work and can give you uh, can can give you a good idea of some techniques that could be done with them. Uh, one cool final thing I should mention is that the way it works is that these different frame buffer shaders can be combined together, uh, and I think I've handled all the cases so you can combine them in all the the different ways you like. So you can uh, have some shaders that take place at different layers but you can even have uh, a shader that takes you can have them overlap so you could have multiple shaders take place on the same layers you can even say that you want one shader to take place on like all layers and some shaders take place on just some layers in between and the engine will automatically work it out and work out when to blit at the, uh, the right time to make sure that all the shaders are applied